Hey guys, it is Nick here with another Next Topics Dragon Ball What If Topic video for today. And today, we have reached the finale of What If Hercule Was a Z Fighter. That's right, today we are concluding the series with a 20 minute video. So strap yourselves in, grab a snack, and let's dive into the finale of the story. We recap to the Tournament of Power in which the likely team-up of Goku, Hercule, and Vegeta have just gotten done defeating the likes of Universe 9, and Lavender's Poison being countered by Goku and Hercule's Ultra Instinct, allowing Vegeta to have good openings on the other trio of danger, and easily defeat all of them. We get back into the Tournament of Power, in which Vegeta still goes to fight Botamo and Magetta, or I'm sorry, Botamagetta, like the original, and that goes pretty much the same as you would expect. All of the other stuff goes kind of normal with other characters, but then we get to Vegeta meeting Kaba, because Kaba sees him and wants to fight him, but since these two never had a master-student reaction or interaction, Vegeta just eliminates him right on the spot. No holding back, nothing. Then, we get to the fight where it would originally be 18 versus Shoza and Krillin jumping in and so on, but since there's no 18 and Krillin relationship, King Piccolo takes the stead of fighting Shoza. Now, the power difference is much more major because... This King Piccolo has trained a lot and just recently fused with Kami. So it's definitely a much bigger gap in power than the 18 versus Shoza fight. But one simple kick, like 18 versus Shoza, knocks Shoza down, and King Piccolo thinks that he killed him, half of him kind of enjoying the moment, because it's still King Piccolo. He's good, but not like. Still a little bit of evil in him, kind of. But Shoza then jumps up with his fake death strategy and throws the Demon King off guard. But just at that moment when King Piccolo is about to fall off, Gohan is actually the one to come in and save him. Now this is, isn't me trying to immediately make Gohan and Piccolo like each other because that really isn't going to become a thing here. It's just Gohan looking out for another teammate in the group, and the two easily defeat Shoza. Then, Majora steps in, but he, even though the whole not being able to see thing is made aware of at first, he's still at most easily defeated by the two's, like, power. Now, Frost having transformed into his fourth form like way earlier on in the tournament, making it kind of a surprise, but not really, to like people like Vegeta. Frost did this because he didn't get a chance to transform in the Universe 6 tournament, if you guys remember seeing that um, episode. But anyways, Frost then tries to take the opportunity, like he did with Krillin in the original, to knock out Gohan while he's distracted, or at least one of them. But King Piccolo catches him and blasts him out, saying that that's a dirty move. Even for him, he thinks it's a dirty move. We then get to the Goku versus Cauliflower and Kale scene, which actually goes per normal, and he tells Hercule to keep out. Because Hercule, he's okay with Hercule helping him out, because they're lifelong best friends. But he wants to be able to fight the likes of Khalifa and Kale, and maybe learn a bit from Universe 6 Saiyans. So he tells Hercule to just stay back and watch. So the whole thing goes normal with that fight, with Jiren being the one to put out Kale's lights like originally, and Topo blasting Goku with his Justice Flash before he can fight Jiren. Now, the whole five pride trooper thing goes per normal, except with you no know, 17 and 18. And that's that's pretty much it. That's the, really the only difference here. We then get to a big difference. The likeliness 
of Universe 2 and their transformation. Now, the startup is built up the same way, except 17 isn't there to interrupt the transformation. But Kakunza and Vickle are eliminated by the likes of Gohan and Videl. Then Rosie, she is eliminated by the likes of Goten, who, if you haven't seen before, is 18 right now. Now, Ribrian is actually forced to use her super form because it's not just Goku who's fighting her this time. It's Goku and Hercule because, like I said, they're lifelong best friends and they have really, really good synergy, fighting together since the olden days where they first met. And their teamwork is most definitely noted by everybody surrounding the area, including Ribrian. But she's not going to let this pride show to her enemies. No way. She's got a tournament to win. It is so much a potent teamwork that Ribrian has to use her ultimate form to even remotely come close to even breaking their synergy somehow, some way. But this um, this turn of the tables won't last. Hercule pulls out his super Hercule form. Goku pulls out Mystic Super Saiyan God. And with that, with just a simple combined attack from the two, Ribrian is toast. And Universe 2 is getting fighters knocked down way earlier on. Gohan versus Botamo would go the exact same way, so... Nothing to really say about there. We then get to the Gohan and Albany fight. That goes per normal. Except the one to fight Rubalt is King Piccolo and not Piccolo. That's pretty much the only difference in that fight. With Universe 10 then being the next one erased like the original. Now, we get to another notable change. Kunchi is actually still in the tournament. Because Hit was knocked out by Goku way earlier on, because he was the first one to fight. That means that Dispo hasn't been at all injured, and Kunchi is still in the tournament. Not a really huge difference, but it's still a, a notable difference for the Tournament of Power speaking. Now, since Ganos was knocked out earlier on, Kawei and Dakuri are eliminated by the likes of Pan. Mainly... They're kind of holding back, but not really, because it's a little girl. But Pan shows that even though she's a kid, she's no slouch. If you've seen Pan from Dragon Ball GT, you'll know what I mean. Now, the whole thing with Hermilla and Prom and Tien being the one to knock Hermilla out and then Prom being eliminated, that pretty much goes down poor normal, because Tien is the weakest one in the tournament as of this point. Now, the next fight we would see would be Mashi Kayo trying to take an attack on Jiren. And originally, Dispo fought him for a little, got caught off guard, Jiren knocked him out, yada yada yada. But, with Kunchi still in the tournament, it's Dispo and Kunchi together who are the ones to actually knock out Mashi Kayo. And Jiren doesn't step in this time because he just lets these two take care of it because he has more people around him. He doesn't care, but he has more people around him, so he'll just let them take care of it. And Kunchi's there to make sure that Dispo doesn't get caught off guard. Now, Magetta is ordered by the likes of Champa, because he's all alone and has no Frost or Bertamo. He is ordered by Champa to go after Pan, seeing her as an easy target because she's like the youngest and figures that she must be the weakest of the group. Take out the little one, and the rest will follow suit. But Pan hears this and gets angry. She's like, she points up, she looks up at Champa, and then points over to where Magetta is standing. And she says, you really think that this big metal tin can is enough to beat me? You gotta send your runts to do your dirty work and attack a little girl? But this insult catches Magetta's ears because Pan's pretty much yelling it. And, of course, 
this would be the first time that we actually know of the Metal Man's weakness to insults, because Goku knocked him out with pure strength. He never insulted him. So, Pan does feel sorry for this, but it's a tournament, so she has to knock him out. But she does feel sorry that she hurt his feelings. Gohan versus Jamiz would happen like original, but with no Frieza and no Frost, he would just fight Jamiz, and he would obviously be the victor, because with Gohan's tr potent training, with Beerus and such, it's a most noted that he would definitely win this. We then get to the Goku versus Jiren fight, which is there is going to be a very huge change, which is going to pretty much end the tournament right then and there, and you'll see what I mean. Because Hercule is there, and Goku actually accepts Hercule's help because he seems like the strongest one, and it'd be potent to have, like, another teammate. Now, by the time Goku goes into the likelihood of Super Saiyan God, Mystic Super Saiyan God, and Mystic Super Saiyan Blue, Hercule pulls out Ultra Instinct Omen to keep up, because by then... His super form, and just his mystic form in general, isn't really cutting it with Jiren, even when they're teaming up. But Jiren still has to pull out a little bit of more power than originally, so it's not like it's not potent at all. Now, when Goku sees that Hercule pulled out Ultra Instinct Omen, and realizing that his mystic Super Saiyan Blue really isn't cutting it, he pulls out Omen too. And Jiren, at this point, believe it or not, hate me if you want, has to pull out full power. Why, you might ask? Because there is one Earthling with very, very high concentrated focus of Ultra Instinct Omen attacking him, and the strongest one on the team, the Saiyan Goku, in Ultra Instinct Omen 2. And plus, as I said, perfect synergy and teamwork. And by the time these powers are colliding and Jiren pulling out full power, the force of this knocks out the rest of Universe 2, the rest of Universe 3, the rest of Universe 4, and the rest of Universe 6, which is mainly consisting of... There really is no one left in Universe 6, except Sionel and Perina, so... Oh, and Khalifla and Kale. Now, aside from those guys from Universe 6, the rest of Universe 7 has to hold on for dear life with all their energy to just stay in the ring. And Dispo, Kunchi, and Topo are still in the tournament as well. But it's most noted that these three, their energy and force is major. Pretty much decimating almost the entire ring. Now, even though their energy and focus is good, Jiren's full power is still m a bit more powerful than their Ultra Instincts combined. That is until Hercule whips out Mastered Ultra Instinct. Since Hercule had pretty much Mastered Omen, he had a little bit of practice with Mastered. He hasn't mastered Master Ultra Instinct, that's a bit of a tongue twister, but he has some control over it, to a degree, much more so than Goku does right now. Speaking of which, Goku then realizes that it's all or nothing, and whips out his Mastered Ultra Instinct, but he has to pull a little bit more focus, because Goku doesn't have as much training with Ultra Instinct as Hercule, because Hercule and Bedell had the training first. And Goku had been mainly trying to get God Key first. And by this point, even when Jiren brings out his buff full power form, it is most noted that her that their teamwork and the Master Ultra instincts together, Jiren doesn't even compare. It, it is mo most noted that he is almost no match. He surprises them at first, but it's just not enough. And they easily overpower him the first few seconds of the fight. And mind you, this is the Goku versus Jiren part of the tournament that they knock him out. Afterwards, 
the rest of the tournament is basically a wash. Because Universe 6 and Universe 11's fighters are all that's left besides Universe 7. So the rest of the tournament is a washout for the Universe 7 team. Super Shenron is summoned, and the wish is given to Goku or whoever wants it from Universe 7 to restore all the universes, and the tournament of power comes to an end. But the story isn't over. If you guys remember, I stated that Present Cell had survived because the bunker of Dr. Jero's lab was never discovered because no future timeline. Which means that around this time, Present Cell is going to awaken because I've seen and heard some posts and videos that stated that around this time he would appear. And so we have Present Cell's introduction. Now, he is not as strong as you might think, even with all the data that has been shown. He has a lot of data, but with a lot of sagas not happening or being cut very short, that means that Present Cell, he is very, very strong. He's on that kind of god par, but he isn't as strong as you might think. He's in the quadrillions and quintillions in that range, but it, I'll, I'll tell you guys in a minute. And it's also noted that he still, his directive after being awoken is to absorb 17 and 18 for some reason, because perfection. But remember, these two were killed along with 16 by the group and King Piccolo. So it's just imperfect cell. He doesn't have 17 and 18 to fall back on. And even though he has tremendous power, he's still angered that he doesn't have that goal anymore. So he takes out his anger right away, killing the likes of Krillin and Tien first. Now, since this is the time of the DBS Broly movie and everyone's training at the lake resort that Bulma had, Goku and Vegeta would be training there originally, everybody notices this, especially Goku. And they're like, Krillin and Tien just died. Who? And then they sense the power. It's like a million powers. and They have no idea what's going on. It's like someone's killing him and it's just a bunch of confusion. But right at that moment, before they can process anything, Present Cell makes himself known. And everyone is just confused at to who this creature is. But then they're all angry, and it's like, Did you kill our friends? Present Cell then smirks, and then states that he was ripped from his prize of 17 and 18, and that they're the ones who killed them. And then he spills the whole story of who he is, how he was created, and that they should have checked Dr. Jero's lab much more thoroughly. Because had they done that, they wouldn't have had to deal with him now. And now they're going to face his wrath. Now, Beerus, knowing that this guy is an immediate threat to the multiverse with a million people's data in him, and knowing this guy's an immediate threat and just having no patience for him whatsoever, knows that he can't play around here, and delivers a full power. This is Beerus at full power, Hakai, which pretty much incinerates half of the Earth. Well, uh, it creates a gigantic line across the Earth, basically, and vaporizes Cell. Now, I know, I kind of ripped off cell, present Cell here pretty quick, but like I said, Cell, Beerus was never shown to like use his full power, so it's noted that Beerus would most likely take the initiative here in this case. And there is no DBS Broly because there is no Frieza, no Frieza army, and Broly and Paragus would basically die on Vampa from no food. So, the DBS Broly arc doesn't happen either. 
<laughs> and that's pretty much the end of the story. We have seen this guy, Hercule Mark Satan, go from a young, brash, arrogant adult into a literal god warrior, even more so than he ever could have been, having a golden cape symbolized to have the training of the gods themselves, being able to train with Beerus and Whis, and master the technique of the angels. And I'm sure that if this guy were to have gotten this strong in the series, the series would have almost been a complete washout in some arcs like I've shown. But that's pretty much where we end this story, my friends. Now, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed the series up until the end. I hope you guys that have stuck around enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts about the entire series in its entirety in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and the series and want to see more on this channel. And as for the next series, it's going to be Dragon Ball again. But what it is, I'll leave for a surprise. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Catch you later.